what do you make of this this human being that's still in Downing Street who who literally <laughs> who you know and listen I've been a fan he I mean even even when he loses to two by elections even when the chairman of the Tory party resigns at 5:35 a.m. last Friday he comes out and says I want a third term is it in your mind the beginning of the end of Boris Johnson will he bounce back as he's always managed to Andrew because he's incredible you're right Jeremy he always has managed to bounce back but I think the bounce is losing its ability to get much height yeah. uh, there I mean it's going to be a slow death but I think it will be a death by a thousand cuts uh, I mean his ability to go on is uh, amazing and and he's judged <laughs> by an entirely different set of rules I mean in the old days there used to be this metaphor where the 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 some Tory grandee would go to a leader who had outstayed his welcome with a bottle of whiskey and a revolver and just say, here, we'll leave this with you and you won't be leader anymore. Yeah. But some Tory said to me, the problem is that Boris would drink the whiskey and shoot whoever brought the revolver. Absolutely. <laughs> he just he just seems to run uh, by different rules, doesn't he? Do you Do you think that the political situation he finds himself in, certainly at the turn of the year when his back was against the wall, Andrew, and then the Ukrainian situation happened, and we think back to Thatcher in the Falklands mm. and how much of a bounce. He made a big thing at G7 this week, Zelensky, and hugging everybody and seemingly leading from the front. He's been very strong on strikes. But there seem a lot of people in his party who can't quite decide whether this man is an electoral liability or the vote winner he always has been. And I think that's the crux, isn't it? That is the crux of it. And the crux of, is that he's the issue. Yeah. You see, say when the Tories were trying to get rid of Margaret Thatcher in the very late 1980s, uh, the poll tax was an issue. Yeah. Uh, our relationship with Europe was the issue. They were issues. So when John Major became the next prime minister after Mrs. Thatcher, he just abolished the poll tax. Yeah. Job done, that issue's gone. This isn't about issues. Brexit's done and dusted, whether you wanted it or not. That has happened. Uh, it's about him. And the ironic thing is that uh, he's still a massive vote generator, yeah, yes. but not the way he was in 2019 when he was a vote generator to get people to vote Tory. He's now a vote generator to get people to vote against the Tories. People think, are motivated to go and vote against him. I think, I think it's change. really, I think that's absolutely right. And I think the thing about Johnson is he polarises opinion. And I wonder, without somebody jumping on me and saying you're missing the point, I wonder whether the truth of the matter is, you know, his great hero is, Kit, is, is Churchill. And mm. you wonder, like Churchill, Churchill was fantastic during war, and in peacetime, he wasn't the same person. Correct. You wonder whether Boris Johnson, Andrew, is one of those people who got Brexit done, the Ukraine mm -hmm. war, but actually the mundane, everyday political BS that all ministers and prime ministers have to deal with. Maybe he just isn't interested in that stuff. Maybe he's the big, you know, the rolling out the vaccine, all that. Maybe it's the small stuff that will bore him and bring him down in yeah. the end. And the not so small stuff too, which just isn't his shtick. I mean, I can't imagine a, an issue less up Boris Johnson street than cost of living. You know, it's about what things cost in the supermarket shelves, how difficult it is to meet all the tax bills and the national insurance, to put food on the table, to meet the cost of fuel, which is going to rise and rise and rise and get worse. These are not natural Boris Johnson issues. These no. are not things that he's comfortable talking about. And yet they're going to become more and more dominating the agenda. And although he is I think quite rightly, being generally praised for being out front with Ukraine and being there with President Zelensky and so on. Don't don't forget, they removed Margaret Thatcher when we were on the brink of war with Saddam Hussein. It's true. It, uh, you know, this was the woman who had won the Falklands. It didn't stop the Tories from getting rid of her. So I don't think, no matter how good he is about Ukraine, it saves his skin. Um, I still think they'll have to drag him out. There are a few quick questions for you. What do you make of the strikes and Mick Lynch in particular at the moment, the RMT? I interviewed Mick Lynch just for the Channel 4 show that I've been doing on Sunday nights, just before the strike started. And I said to him, you're going on strike because every time you go on strike, you win. So it's a sensible thing for you to do and you've got your members' fantastic conditions as a res result. But maybe, just maybe, things have changed. That now we all know how to work from home and we've been doing it off and on for two years. Just maybe you don't have a grip and the ability to grind this country to a halt that you did before. And punish, and, and punish people in this country who are suffering massively. And I think, tonally, I said the other day, it just... 
I don't think it will resonate as it would have done with a lot. I don't agree with these polls. I think a lot of people are very, very angry about how it... And, so I think you know, the it, it, may be, it may not be as difficult, it may, may not be as easy for him to win this time as it has in the past. Uh, next leader of the Tory party, in your mind? No idea at all. And the fact that I have no idea and that most Tories have no idea as well. And I'm sure, Jeremy, you have no uh, idea I think it'll either. be left field. Of, I think it'll be left field. I always think it's left field. Cameron was left field. I, I think it will not that, be that's anybody That's right. It usually there. is. Look, John Major was a bit left field. In a day, Margaret Thatcher was left field yeah, as was. well. No one expected her to uh, do as well against what, that. What do you Plus make... Brand. What do you make of Sir Dreary Starmer? Are you a, are you a fan, or are you? Do you think he's done a good uh, job? Well, you know, in my job, I'm not allowed to be a fan or or against. All I would say is this: it, it, it you know, there was an opinion poll that came out of the week at the weekend that gave Labour a three point lead, a three point lead. At this stage, Tony Blair had a thirty point Absolutely. lead in 1995. And if it wasn't for Johnson, Mr. Johnson sucking all the energy out and all the limelight towards him, we'd be in a crisis for the Labour Party and for Keir Starmer at the yeah, moment. Yeah. But, of course, we're in a crisis for Boris Johnson. I think the Labour Party have a very difficult job ahead of them. And, and, and I'm like you. It's an, they've had so many open goals, Andrew, to be three, six points in the lead. <laughs> Blair was out of sight. We, uh, we head to a hung parliament. Let's just repeat your podcast, The Backstory. Tell us more briefly, my friend. It's just a chance of people who've shaped events or are still shaping events. It's quite international. Former Australian Prime Minister, the guy who ran Sainsbury's, who was brilliant. I've just done the last one, uh, Catherine uh, Balsing, uh, who runs that wonderful school in uh, near Wembley. Uh, it's about, it gives you a chance over an hour to have a real conversation and not just go for, you know, short questions and short answers. And you, both sides can get engaged. They're great fun to do. And so far, people seem to, to like them. They like the chance to hear something in depth.